ship, so to speak, or, or do you think that they still have some kind of wet dream here of, of actually surviving themselves and living in a you know a depopulated uh, paradise type you know world? Or what do you think their goal in in all of this actually is? I think it depends on the individual again, but I think it runs the whole gamut there. Yeah, you have the guys that are just hysterical laughing, and they don't mind that they're dying. They're in a way committing suicide, and they don't even mind that they're lunatics. But then you have the other people that have um, the stream of the utopia where there's only 500 million people living on Earth, and it's – That everybody's living in harmony with nature and <laughs> they've got all these wonderful technologies to take care of them and they're going to be a part of it see and they're going to get rid of all the excess people but that's all right the excess population will be gone uh, they were a problem anyway to begin with mm. uh, in their mind see you know humans wrecked a planet uh, <laughs> that we're getting to blame for it see the mass of people is getting to blame for the things that they've created. They've created technology from the beginning, the guys with this sort of mindset, and then everybody else kind of just goes along with it. Yeah. And then they end up getting wiped out in the end. Well, exactly. That's that's a good point. It seems to be that the uh, you know, our ancestors on the on the on the fields, if you will, didn't kind of potentially were too happy about going into the whole the industrial era that we talked about mm -hmm. before, but yet we were kind of forced into that situation and now here we are getting the blame for, you know, global warming, for instance, or, you know, carbon emissions here and there. And, and, and you rarely hear talk about space industry or military industry or even wars, how much pollution that, you know, releases, so to speak. And it's very, the, it's very off balance, the whole discussion here, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, I, we didn't ask for this, but we're here. So, and <laughs> yes. now we're getting blamed for it. <laughs> yes. Um, So, so, so again, the the the, the question is here. Um, I, I've talked with previous guests about this as well, and would be interesting to get your take on it. And that is, um, do you think it will be possible to uh, stay away from it and actually have a place somewhere where we still can go on the planet, or will this be such a global grid that it was uh, it will be on one sense impossible to escape from it? Oh man, yeah, I know that. Um I think it was Warwick. Dr. Warwick was saying that maybe it was Dick Ray. I forget. One of them said that uh, we will allow these people who don't want to take on all these new technologies to be kind of like a subsect of the population, kind of like the Amish are now, and just like uh, you know have their little preserve or something. Maybe maybe they'll set off a nice little section of South Dakota for us and <laughs> march us up up there. You know what I mean? So. But yeah, it's 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 it is terrifying to think about that because what do you do when uh, these artificial intelligences are created that are so hyper intelligent and God knows what level they're even thinking on if they are created? Uh, would they allow the um, existence of normal humans? Like, what kind of how does a machine like that even think? You you can't even imagine that. It but I. I tend to think that machines do think in terms of efficiency. Yes. So it all comes down to would it be efficient to leave them alive or wouldn't it be? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Well, exactly. And, and it, we shouldn't even you know, neglect or forget to mention that a machine or an intelligence is still something that is programmed by a human being to begin with. That means that the machine or the robot or whatever it is is going to reflect the mindset of its creator. Uh, which mm -hmm. means that if they choose to program this thing to act out against uh, a certain class or rank or what mm -hmm. have you, that's that's a very big threat possibility here. Meaning that they could, for instance, even program to program these machines to say, okay, let's you know pretend like you're going berserk and start you know killing off a lot of people, and then we can basically through a back door uh, protect ourselves through through um, you know. Through code or whatever, saying that okay, these and these and these individuals keep them keep them alive, basically. Uh, it's mm -hmm. Very weird, <laughs> very very weird. <laughs> very weird, and yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. So um, maybe we can backtrack a little bit uh, again and talk about the um, uh, is it NICB report? It, it's NBIC. NBIC. Yeah. That, yeah, that stands for nanotechnology. Biotechnology, information technology, and cognitive technology. Mm -hmm. 
those are those are the four main areas of convergence that are coming together that will supposedly create the singularity. And uh, this specific report was released by uh, was it the military who released this report? It was the National Science Foundation. Okay. Uh, they got together with, um, yeah, the National Science Foundation put it on. And like I said, there were tons of different people from private organizations, from government. Uh, Newt Gingrich was there, uh, Rand Corporation guys, uh, Hewlett Packard, MIT, you know, this sort of deal, all, all sorts of big shots in the technological field. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And and why do do you think that this was, uh, or was this just like one of the more interesting you looked at, or was there something specific in this particular report that kind of really uh, opened your eyes to what they're doing? Well, it was interesting because it's a long report, and you read it, and it's a tough thing to read. But um, if you read these things, make sure you like uh, underline and take notes when you read them. Because when you go back through your notes, you uh, understand, <laughs> you put together everything you read, and you're like, whoa, this thing was everywhere. I mean, they mention every single aspect of this technology and its implications. It's, it's amazing the, the directions they go in these reports. It, it really blows my mind. And do you remember if they specifically talk about uh, reasons for for this uh, for for the the uh, progress or for why they want to bring this technology forth, I would reckon that they would have some kind of uh, um, you know basic thing that they always throw at us, which is you know if we don't do it, the other guy will or whatever. Uh, but do you, yeah. do you remember yeah. something like that? Yeah, well, that, there was a quote just like that from Newt Gingrich saying that all the uh, nations that don't take on this technology are going to be behind and they're going to be weaker and poorer. And um, the key goal of all of it was enhancing human performance. Mm -hmm. So, again, we have this idea of efficiency and making hu the human machine more efficient, enhancing human performance. That's really what it comes down to. And um, let's see here. So is there anything more that we can mention from – from the report, and do they even do you know if they set a like a, a timeline on this that uh, we we have certain um, you know milestones that we want to achieve at a certain specific date and time here, or what do you think? Well, I know in the other British MOD report they said by 2035 we'd have implantable microchips in our brains that okay. would be able to um, beam uh, artificial sensory perception into our brain. So true. Okay. Sheesh. <laughs> and it, it reminds me a little bit also about um, Huxley, who talked about this idea of um, basically, you know, stimulus. They've 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 done specific <laughs> research on on rats and so forth, on um, where they basically implant a microchip, and when every time this rat presses a, a button or whatever it is, a lever or whatever it is that it's doing, it basically stimulates stimulates the the pleasure centers of the brain, and what ended up what, what what ended up happening was that this rat was pressing this, I think he said like eighty thousand times a day or something like that until it was like uh -huh. totally exhausted, you know, and uh -huh. um, and that's the other aspect to all of this in that sense, meaning that um, the 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 final and last form of of you know entertainment, if we even can call it that or whatever, is it's just to to keep people so incredibly occupied and 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 what Huxley talked about he talked about it from the perspective of that we should love our serv servitude meaning that we can have a, a small device implanted in our brains that continuously kind of stimulates the pleasure center so we're like we're we're, we're going to go in this kind of uh, uh, you know haze of 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 pleasure yet we're going to be total slaves and, and you know doing the work for someone else or what have you and and this is you know a really really, really scary uh, scenario that he talked about way back when. Um, do you know if anything like that is, is uh, talked about in, in some of the reports that you've gone through? Um, in the reports, uh, I know um, not really so much in the reports, but as you said, the clip of Huxley speaking at Berkeley that you're referring to there is in the film. Uh, yeah, he's talking about... Um, what you can do to uh, to get people basically addicted to pleasure, endless pleasure and entertainment, and basically numbing the mind so much that you don't even know what's going on. It's his, his idea that's um, talked about in A Brave New World of 
drugging people out of consciousness, basically. You're not even conscious of what you're doing, but you're stimulated through um, these drugs or through these electrodes in your brain, and you're feeling good. You're feeling good, but you don't know what's actually going on. You're not conscious of the horror that you're actually in. And the rats that you're talking about, they, they ended up dying from pressing this pleasure button over and over again. Mm -hmm. So they basically uh, pleasured themselves to death. And, and that's, that's what happens when you become totally unconscious and you lose the ability to think whatsoever. Um, and this is kind of interesting because I remember just a few days ago I, I uh, put up an, an article on Red Ice that talked about I can just read the first few lines here and, and you'll, you'll know what this is all about but this is actually going in that, that direction it says uh, scientists are developing an electronic sex ship that can be implanted oh. into the brain to stimulate pleasure uh -huh. uh, the ship works yeah. by sending tiny shocks of implanted electrodes in the brain The technology has been used in the United States, and here we go then, to treat Parkinson's disease. But in mm -hmm. recent months, scientists have been focusing on the area of the brain just behind the eyes, known as the orbitofrontal cortex. And this is associated with feelings of pleasure derived from eating and sex. So they're basically looking into this aspect of things right now. And, and so again, this is something that has been... Um, being worked at and it's a very real uh, possible future scenario where we have these basically pleasure you know devices in our head that we basically can you know press at, 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 at you know when we want them to or in a more even worse case scenario is that they are being um, given to us if, if you will for for the the, the sake of um, what do you call it it's like a um, Synthetic sensory perception beamed in your brain. Yeah, exactly. And an, an external thing being uh, being uh, handed to you or given to you if you if you behave good, mm -hmm. almost like a dog. You ha you know give them a bone or whatever. It's very very sinister things behind this. But again, that from from the perspective of the article, they talk about that this should be able to treat uh, uh, <laughs> people suffering from something called uh, uh, anh anhedonia. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly, but that's that's apparently an inability to experience any form of uh, of, of pleasure. So it it goes under that kind of uh, of that kind of guise, if you will. But again, what, what is interesting to note is that uh, what this might bring for other people that don't possibly suffer from these kinds of diseases. So it's very 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 bad indeed. Um, so let's see here if we can move on and talk about some of the other uh, you know i guess concerns or something that you you bring up in the film that uh, that we haven't talked about here today i know that one thing that you begin your film with with is is this idea of um, this is a kind of a, a millennialism or something i don't know what to call it mm -hmm. but you but you very nicely put kind of uh, incorporate this whole idea of the new millennium that we have moved into mm -hmm. we're in a new thousand year cycle basically now and this is going to be a totally different cycle and it, to me it almost seems to be a, a different kind of uh, theology or, or religious type uh, expression behind all of this that we're now moving into. Uh, any, any ideas about that or, or thoughts, Aaron? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, we have this new millennium and yeah, everybody, there's this perceived notion of change. I mean, we hear it all all over again. We, we hear Obama saying his whole campaign slogan was change, and people elected him in a landslide to change things, and nobody really has any, um, for the most part, any real tangible idea of what change actually means. It's just this idea of, again, progress and um, science, uh, developing science to make the world a better place, and The Bill Clinton speech there at the uh, 1999-2000 New Year's is very, very telling. I mean, the things that he says in that speech, they, they don't just say these things in these speeches. No, they say no, these things to, to, yeah, for a very specific purpose, and it, it gets us ready. It, it conditions the mass mind to these ideas that they're saying. You know, we're going to, uh, what did Bill Clinton say? that He's talking about uh, 